For this lesson, we'll be going over battery characteristics and a few fundamentals of batteries. First of all, we'll start a few obvious things. Batteries are considered DC voltage sources. These simple batteries consist of your household batteries or your car battery. A cell is a single unit within the battery. Now, some of your batteries may seem as one unit or one cell. However, there are batteries consist of many cells, so, such as your car battery. If you look in the illustration below, it's made up of several cells. Your 9-volt battery, same thing, and maybe even some of your uh, RC car batteries and various other things are made up of individual cells. Now, there are three main battery types, primary batteries, secondary batteries, and reserve batteries. Primary batteries are typically non-rechargeable, and they're discarded after they're used up. These would be like your household batteries, such, you know, such as the ones you use in your remote controls. Secondary batteries are rechargeable batteries. Uh, these are ones that you'd use in your car or your cell phone. Again, these are ones you typically recharge. Reserve batteries, you may not see that often or hear about. These are ones typically, uh, typically used in weapon systems, such as missiles or torpedoes. They are non-rechargeable, however, they have a long-term shelf life. And once activated, then that's when the battery is being used. So they can sit on a shelf for a long time and obviously not discharge over time. The main parameter to gather this lesson would be battery capacity. Battery capacity is measured in amp hours. This is the amount of current available per hour of constant usage. If you look at the illustrations below, I have a blue battery and a black battery. The blue battery is rated at 3.6 volts, 700 milliamps. So if I hooked a light bulb to this that was rated for 3.6 volts and it required 700 milliamps of constant usage, this battery would only last one hour. Pretty simple. Now, if the light bulb required less current, the battery would last longer and vice versa. So if you had a higher current demand, you'd have less capacity. Now, I have a table to the left here that's labeled battery capacity. You can find this in most of your PE references. I just took a few slides of it just so that way you get an idea of what it might illustrate in some of your textbooks. The AAA battery is rated for a draw of 2, amp, 2 milliamps and it will last 290 hours. And obviously as the current demand went up, the capacity went down. This is very similar to fuel in your car. If you ran your vehicle at high RPMs, you would have less fuel overall, less capacity. So, and we'll go over this more in a few example problems. Now something to be aware of when performing your battery circuit analysis is that all batteries possess an internal resistance. Meaning, if you have a 12 volt battery, and you added a load in series to your battery, that load may not eat the whole 12 volts. You may have an internal resistance that would probably absorb some of that voltage. Now, a method to be very familiar with is source transformation. We've done source transformation in previous videos. However, we're gonna do a little bit of it in our uh, examples after this slide. All right, we'll start off with an easy one, as well as this is a common one you may see on some of your practice problems. A battery reads exactly 12 volts on a multimeter without a load connected, okay? Once a 10K ohm resistor is connected in series with the battery, the multimeter displays 11.98 volts. Find the internal resistance of the battery. All right, so here's what we have. We have right now, let's see if I can draw this halfway decent, 12 volt battery. So when you hook your meter between points A and B here, we have 12 volts exactly. Then, and again, I'll try to draw this as best I can. And once we have a resistor, a 10K ohm resistor to be exact, in series with the battery, we're gonna have a voltage of, and in, whether it's between these points or these points, it's the same. It's gonna be 11.98 volts. See if I can make my handwriting look any worse today. All right, so here's what we got. We got volts drop at the 10K ohm resistor, our load resistor, which is our load. We have our battery, which is a 12 volt battery. Now we want to find the internal resistance. Now, as we state in our PowerPoint, we're going to have our battery, then internal resistor, and then whatever you hook to the battery, which would be your load resistor in this case. So we have 10K here unknown resistance there, and a 12 volt battery there. Well, we know the voltage drop here again is 11.98 volts. So with this information here, we can find the internal resistance. Since this is all in series, let's see if we can find the current. Well, 
pretty simple. Current equals V over R. So for this one we have current equals, we have a voltage drop right there which is 11.98 volts over 10K. And using our calculator that's going to give us an answer of 0.198 times 10 to negative 3 amps. So 1.198 milliamps. Okay. So right there we found our current for the whole circuit. Let's see if we can find the voltage drop for the internal resistor. Well, if the 10K ohm is eating the 11.98 volts, all that leaves left is, let's see, well, that way you can visually see what I'm doing. It's going to give us 0 0.02 volts, so which means this resistor right here is absorbing 0 0.02 volts. Okay, so we have the current, we have the voltage. Well, simple Ohm's law, R equals V over I, and this is going to equal 0 0.02 volts over, we have the current, which is 1.198, and I'll just say milliamps, and plug and chug that in our calculator, it's going to give us an answer of 16.69 ohms. So by using a little ohms law and a little information, you can find the internal resistance of just about any battery. And that would be our final answer. Now this one's not very difficult at all, but you need to be aware of these problems do exist, and this is actually a very common problem you may see. Some of your practice problems provide two voltages, and they want you to find the internal resistance based off those two voltages. This would be one way of finding it. There's other videos out there that have uh, simple equations such as uh, V1 minus V2 over V2 times this, times this is your load resistance, and that will also give your uh, internal resistance. But I did want to go over one problem so you get familiar with internal resistance and how it affects your circuit. Alright, so let's go to another problem that's going to be a little bit more fun. Alright, now we got ourselves a good fun one right here. We have three batteries that are connected in series and they're powering a light bulb. The light bulb is rated for 4.5 volts and it's a .135 watt bulb. How long will the batteries illuminate the light bulb? Okay. On the battery labels, they're rated for 1.5 volts at 1,000 milliamp hours, and they're in series. To visualize this using the schematic, you have three DC voltage sources, and they're all connected in series. Well, anytime you have a voltage source connected in series, you add the voltage values together. So that would mean that 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts, if you add them together, together they're going to create one battery of 4.5 volts. Now each one is rated for 100 milliamp hours. That doesn't mean you add them together. Like current sources, when they're in series you do not add them together. When they're in parallel is how you increase your current. When these are in parallel you could add the 1000 milliamps all together. But since they're in series, these have a grand total of 1000 milliamp hours. Just because they're in series. So be aware of that that will trip you up when you do future problems. In fact, in our next problem, we'll go into that in more detail. So, with these in series, we created one battery of 4.5 volts at 1,000 milliamp hours. Very simple. Okay. Well, here's what we got. We got a bulb that takes 4.5 volts. So right then and there, we're good. But also requires 0.135 watts of power. Well, we need to translate this in the current. So what's the current usage for this bulb? Well, the current usage for it is, well, P equals I times V. So, we want to find I. It's pretty simple. So, it's 0.135 watts over, and this voltage of 4.5 volts. Plug and chug it in our calculator. It's going to give us a current of 30 milliamps bulb would require 30 milliamps. Well, we now have the voltage rating, we have the current rating, and we have the battery capacity, which is 1,000 milliamp hours, which we can calculate by if we have a battery that supplies 1,000 milliamp hours, well, the bulb utilizes 30 milliamps, and that's going to give us time because the current cancels each other out. So 1,000 over 30 is going to give us an answer of 
33.33 hours. So that right there is going to be our final answer for how long this bulb would last with this battery configuration. So let's jump into one more problem. Now I think I saved the best for last. You're designing an RC car and after attaining all the parts, you wish to find the best battery configuration to power your new toy. The ideal goal would be to run the RC car as long as possible while minimizing the weight. The car requires 12 volts. Find the optimal battery configuration based on the battery options available. Now for these battery options, assume that all four of these have the same weight. So in this case, you just need to find the optimal battery configuration as far as voltage and capacity. So we're going to try to tackle these one at a time, that way you can find which one would be best for your RC car. So the first one is two batteries in series rated at 6 volts, 600 milliamp hours each. So you have one battery, and let's see if I can draw somewhat decent, one battery. They're in series, 6 volts, 6 volts, and 600 milliamp hours on each one. Well, just like we did in the other problem, anytime they're in series, you don't add the 600 milliamp hours together. They're the same. The thing you add together is voltage. So for the first one, you're going to get a voltage of 6 volts plus 6 volts equals 12 volts with a capacity of 600 milliamp hours. Because again, you don't add them together. So for this first one, it's going to be 12 volts and 600 milliamp hours. Okay. So that one has uh, the correct voltage, but a very low uh, capacity. All right, let's do the next one. All right, so the second one, we have eight batteries, two in series, four sets in parallel, and they're rated at 1.5 volts at 400 milliamp hours each. All right, so let's see if I can give you a visual of what this looks like. And I'm gonna try to use in squares. So we have two batteries in series. And just imagine they're connected. And this is rated at 1.5 volts and 400 milliamp hour capacity each. And then it says this is a set and the rest are in parallel. So which means I did the same thing four times total. And let's see if I can finish that on this real quick. Please forgive my squares. So imagine these are stacked on top of each other as you see. And then it says connect in parallel, which means they took a wire and went to every positive end and then a wire went to every negative end. So you took eight batteries, have a set of series, and the rest are in parallel. So this would create a voltage of three volts with these two right there. So that's three volts, three volts, three volts, three volts. Well, that's your voltage rating. Now you have a 400 milliamp hour capacity. So each set you created here has 400 milliamp hours. Because once you hook them in parallel, you can add these capacities up together. So that would create 400 plus 400 plus 400 plus 400, which would create 1600 milliamp hours. Now remember, when they're in series, you don't add that capacity together. It's only when they're in parallel you can add them together. Simple circuit fundamentals. Just like in source transformation, when you took a DC voltage source with an internal resistor and you wanted to convert it to a current source, it looks something like this. and the internal resistor is in parallel. So every time you do that, you can add these currents, uh, current capacities together. So we have three volts, 1600 milliamp hours. Well, that has a great capacity. Unfortunately, I have a feeling that one's not gonna work due to the fact that the car requires 12 volts. So right then and there, it's a good chance that this one is not gonna work. Okay, let's go to the next one. We have eight batteries four in series, and then those sets in parallel. So same thing as last time, I'm gonna draw it out for you. We have four batteries in series. And then those sets are in parallel, so which means these are connected in series like they're stacked. Just save time, it's looking like this crude manner. And then they took a wire and jumpered the positive ends together and the negative ends together. And these are rated for three volts each. and have a capacity of 700 milliamp hours each. Well, 
like we talked about before, when you stack them like that, you add the voltages together. So 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 12 volts. And these are in parallel, so which means we'd add the capacities together. So it would be 700 plus 700, which is going to give us 1400 milliamp hours. Okay. So that was pretty simple. So that one actually looks promising. 12 volts, 1400 milliamp hours. All right, now we can look at our last one. I don't think I have to draw this one up. I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. 12 volts, and then it has 1,000 milliamp hours. So we have 12 volts. So this is actually just a simple battery that the uh, hobby shop supplied you. So right here, we have 12 volts, 600 milliamp hours. 3 volt, 1,600 milliamp hours. So that one's a no-go regardless because it doesn't meet the requirements. 1,400, and then 1,000. Three of these fit the voltage requirements, and the one that had the best capacity was option three, which was four batteries in series and then two of those sets in parallel. So right there, that is our final answer. So our best one is number three. Now I noticed this took us a while, but you need to be aware of how to manipulate battery configurations as well as understand what happens when you take these batteries and put them in parallel in series. Just like source transformation, when you have current sources in series, they're going to act different than when they're in parallel, and vice versa with voltage sources. I think we have enough information here to make you dangerous, and I hope you have a good evening.